You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Fell. I am so 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 intrigued by this game. Um, I I'm I absolutely adore the way the main character looks. I think it is really cool and unique that they have him wearing a mask to kind of conceal himself. Uh, and he's got like a fear of the outside world as he's but anyway guys let's jump right back in and see where this strange tale leads us shall we please sit back and enjoy for the next 20 minutes and let's jump right in alarm chain you're up and let's go all right <clears throat> i'm bold of you to assume i would be willing to run your errands i tease snatching the corn parcel from his outstretched hand greedily uh come on you'll do it for your dear old dad won't you ha <laughs> just this once and i'll try to be back as soon as i can okay oh no no take your time I have to get some papers sorted, confirm some of our orders, and die and divvy some of the corn up into the smaller smaller bushels for them. Oh, uh, okay then. Well, still, I'll try to be fast. I'll be here when you get back, okay? And when I finish that work, we can head down to the community center together for that drink. <laughs> it sounds good, old man. I chuckle one last time while waving goodbye, stuffing the corn parcel into my pocket as I walk around the house toward the road that leads into town. The walk down to the orchard was far more pleasant than I was expecting. It had warmed up a decent bit, so obviously cool, but not quite as cold as the October morning I had just worked through. Mm, God, I love a cold October mornings. It was nice to get some light cardio and after three months of nothing, even if it was just a five or ten minute walk. Anyways, it's time to do some socializing. I scanned the outside of the orchard house, looking for Davy in order to avoid having to knock on his door, but quickly realized that a, that a knock is going to have to be that a knock is going to be required. Gods, please let me not embarrass myself too much. Thank you. I pray quietly to myself, knowing that if any gods are listening, they definitely aren't interested in, interested in my socializing skills. Or, or lack thereof. Okay. I do a quick one, two, three, and then... Knock, knock, knock! I go for it, and begin the everlasting wait for a response. After what I presume to be too long without one, I raise my paw again and clench it, readying a fist to a knock once again. One. Two. Oh, oh, hello there. Look who it is. Ah! <laughs> I scream and turn out of shock, almost giving myself whiplash in the process as my eyes settle on the visage of white. <laughs> I roll my eyes as the as the hue laughs at me before I begin trying to process what had just happened. Oh, she's adorable. <sighs> Holy fuck, Ash, where the hell did you even come from? I thought you were done being an asshole. I immediately regret my wording. And there are those sad lamb eyes again. Ah, oh, fuck. Shit. Sorry. She says at the same time as me, which truthfully was somewhat shocking. Ash, Ash was never the kind of person to apologize first, or try to at least. I thought you were dead. She admits as her finger twirls the end of her hair. Wait, what? Last time I checked, I looked nothing like your dad. No, no, I mean you're knocking. I was trying to avoid him. Oh! I snuck out the back, peeked out front, and I saw it was you, and I couldn't resist a good scare. Tis the season, you know. Sorry, I wasn't trying to bring back bad memories or anything. Uh, no worries, really, I was just a little frazzled. I, I don't want you to think I'm still upset with you about that. It's in the past, okay? I know, but I still feel bad every now and then. Man, she's grown up a lot. Uh, just a few years back, and just a few years back, and she'd be teasing me about my tail or something. Anyhow, what brings you by? Did you finally surface just to see my pretty face? She teases? Which leaves me staring at her quizzically before suddenly remembering I need to respond to her question. No! Not, not that you aren't pretty. Fuck, fuck, fuckity fuck, fuck, kill me! Um, my, my, my dad, um, I mean your dad owes my dad a favor or, or something? And he wants to cash it in for a bushel of apples? Gods help me. Oh, okay, sure. Wait, really? You don't want, like, proof or something? Should I be asking for proof? Last time I checked, you were, like, the worst liar in Dewhurst. And even if you were lying, it wouldn't matter. I could probably give, your, give you four bushels filled with apples from the outskirts of the orchard, and Dad would literally have no idea anything was missing. And even if he did, he probably wouldn't care. Wow, really? That's... God, Ash is absolutely adorable. Wow, that's... Really, that's... Wait... I'm not the worst liar in Dewhurst. She tries to subdue a laughing bout, but only half succeeds. Yeah, yeah, then why do you wear that mask? I thought the whole idea was to make it so you were less readable. I... 
No, no I wear it because I like it. I say, only half lying. It's not like she's right, either. I mean, the lack of emotion conveyance is a plus, but it's definitely not the driving factor. Whatever you say. Anyhow, I can have those apples ready for you in an hour or two. Probably less. Two hours? What? Are you picking the entire orchard? No. She stares, unamused, before continuing. I have a couple of actual paying customers to pick bushels for first, so I'll get to yours when I get to yours. She says that with joking, sassy tone she's famous for. Hey, hey, excuse me, Princess Ash. I say, throwing my arms up in a mock defeat-like pose, causing us to both to laugh at the silly exchange. But really, sorry, thanks for doing this. I'm sure I can knock around and waste an hour or two while you work your magic. I add, trailing off as I look to off toward the short road, in short road in town. It has been a whole summer, after all. Maybe I'll have to go on a wild goose chase to find Mr. Jones. Who knows? Oh, by the way, um, I, um, I don't know if you're staying out for the rest of the year, but I kind of missed you. My eyes dart back to the ash-white you, and I feel my face get hot. If you're not too busy, I'd like to hang out. I gotta help the mayor set up the Spirits Day Festival, and I could definitely use a spare set of hands. Or, a uh, pause. Only if you'd want to. I, uh, what day were you thinking? I was thinking Tuesday, or Wednesday, either or. I think for a moment, but just start speaking before the thought fully forms. Sure. That, sure, but uh, I'll have to check with Dad first to see if he has anything that we need to do. Her face lights up momentarily, but she hides behind a neutral expression almost immediately. Cool, just uh, let me know what Max says as soon as he can, okay? Yeah, yeah, of course. But uh, I am. I should get going. I have some things I need to do in town, and I'll see you when I'm done, yeah? I don't know, probably... I've been doing housework since about three in the morning, so I might have to sleep after I get done with your order. Oh. Yeah, well, no worries. Either way, I'll see you if I see you. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you if I see you. Oh, she's adorable! And with that, I take my leave. Waving as I walk the few steps back to the road and head into the town, which, via some mildly in-depth pondering, creeps up on me pretty fast. In a moment, I find myself staring at the entrance to Dewhurst. The community center of the front of the bazaar, but visible past the fountain parallel to each. The community center and the front of the bazaar are visible past the fountain parallel to each other, forming a sort of faux town square. I take a second to think and try to remind myself of what needs to be done. First things first, I gotta hunt down Arrow's dad. But before I can get too deep into the thought, a door opens and closes, catching my attention. Oh, in front of me, I see a familiar goat standing at the front of the door, at the door of the house on the left. Arrow's dad. Oh, that was easy. My chest tightens as I stare at the mail. His face shows that something is definitely on his mind, but I don't think it's my place to ask. <sighs> Not that I even have the courage to. Again, he brings me out of my pondering, taking a deep breath before sharply exhaling and turning to walk towards the town square. A frown crosses my face, and I stare back to the door where he stood, trying to figure out what could have had him so down. And out of nowhere, I remember that I was supposed to be asking him something, but I was too late on the realization. Looking back, I see the goat has already disappeared into the town. Oh, hello there. And once again, before I can even get a thought out, the door opens and closes, revealing another deep in thought goat. This one seems to be... Uh, though, this one seems this seems to immediately take notice of my presence. His face lights up intensely, but only for a millisecond as the emotion quickly gets replaced with a look of mischief. Well, 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 if it isn't the missing child. We laugh at ourselves for a moment before we both wind up dwelling, staring at each other. A wave of regret washes over me. I missed you, Arrow. I take a few steps forward and suddenly I'm hugging him. It feels like it's been years since I saw him last. I missed you too, Wes. He whispers as his hands pat my back and suddenly, for some reason, I feel like sobbing. What in the world is wrong with me? He shifts, signaling the end of the hug, but for some reason I can't let go. Uh, you okay? He asks in a slightly annoyed tone as I manage to make, to make my arms let go of him, and he stares at me for a second. Are you okay, Wesley? He, yeah, I'm fine. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Arrow. You've got nothing to be sorry for. What big silly, birthday boy. He teases again as I look up at him. Well, I thank my mask for not letting him see how close I am to breaking down. Uh, maybe he's right. No. I have a lot to be sorry for. I haven't been a very good friend. I... You have nothing to be sorry for. You're an amazing friend. Now really, cheer up. We got a lot to catch up on, birthday boy. He adds again while flashing that smirk, not giving me a chance to dwell. Okay. Wait. You remembered my birthday? 
kind of question is that? Have I ever missed your birthday? Well, no, I guess not. The way you said it made it sound like it's weird that I remember. No, that's not what I meant. It's just that I've been gone all summer. Or, uh, not gone, but you know what I mean. We haven't talked about it at all, so I don't know. I guess I thought you might have forgotten. Well, considering your birthday is the only chance I is the only one I care about, it makes it pretty hard to forget. He says, glancing back into town. Ouch, was that directed at his dad? Anyways, what brings you out of your cave, Batling? Oh, he's a bat, okay. I thought he was a uh, like a like a possum or something. He teases that cocky smirk crossing his maw again. I try not to roll my eyes too hard as I answer. I was running some errands for Dad and hoping to see you. Oh man, your dad made you an errand boy on your birthday? That's totally fucked. He says sympathetically, but I quickly respond in, a, in defense of my father. Hey, it's not so bad. Uh, he probably only did it because he wanted me to get out of the house for once. God knows I needed it. And it's not like I mind doing a few chores and running some errands. Kind of makes me feel more useful, you know? Uh, yeah, I guess, but it still feels weird to have you doing chores on your day. A tinge of a frown appears on his face and he looks out to, and he looks out to the dirt road behind me. What kind of errands he got you doing, anyway? He asks, returning his attention back to me. Oh, not much. Just a run into town for apples and... I stop in my tracks and think about how to say the next parts. Uh, and to, uh, ask your dad for something? Ugh, what do you need him? What do you need from him? He and Mac were planning on making a run to Port Haven soon. A worried look crosses the goat's face and for a, mo for a moment, but then his eyebrows raise as if he had just solved some sort of riddle. Oh, like an order run? Yeah, we just had a harvest today, but apparently it was late, so they had to push the trip back a few days, I think. Gotcha. Hmm. Why do you look so tense? What else would they be doing in Port ha going to Port Haven for? Oh, nothing. Just Dad did like to run to Port Haven a few weeks back, so I was just confused on why he'd be going back so soon. He says nervously, causing me to raise an eyebrow at his poor attempt at deceitfulness, but I decide not to press. Are you free after you, after you talk to the Dad? I think for a second before responding. Yeah, or no, uh, kinda? I need to go back and carry the bushel we ordered back home, but after that I'm free for a few hours. A few hours? Dad wanted to have a drink with me at the community center to commemorate me being an adult. And you said yes? You hate crowds! He replies, seemingly shocked by the revelation. Well, yeah, I I'm not just gonna say no. It would really hurt his feelings if I didn't at least try to go. Not to mention, I am pretty curious about trying liquor. <laughs> he cackles at that, snorting and wheezing as he holds his knees. I glare at him. What's so funny? I ask, grabbing one of his horns and giving it a shake. But he easily bats my arm away and recuperates from the laughing fit. <laughs> Nothing, just picture you drunk out of your mind. Oh man, you definitely can't handle liquor yet. You're totally a lightweight. I bet I can. I say quietly in response, even though I realize that he's probably right. Well, I wouldn't want to end up like you did last year anyhow. <laughs> Low blow. We don't talk about that. He shudders, and I raise my paws and concede. Hey, I'm just saying. I laugh it off, but Arrow doesn't seem so amused. I feel a little bad, but honestly, what happened wasn't even that big of a deal. I consider whether or not I should tease him on his kissing skills, but quickly decide not to. Anyway. Anyways, let's get your chores out of the way so we can hang. He says, turning suddenly and taking a few steps towards town, beckoning me to follow, which I do without without question. Okay, but uh, I have to wait on Ash to get the bushel together. She said it would probably take her a couple hours, and that was only like 15 minutes ago. A couple hours? Man, everyone's giving you the short end today, huh? He says as he turns into the bazaar area, and I follow suit, letting the bazaar take my senses for a ride as it usually does. Colorful fruits and veggies fill most of the stalls that are being manned, though one or two are selling various dried meats and spices. The sweet smell from the fruit mixing with the dry, salty air form, a, form an odd combination, but not an unwelcome one. No, not really. It's not that big of a deal. If you say so. Either way, we can run by and see what's up after we get done with this. Hmm. Maybe she'll be done sooner than she, than she thought, he says, shrugging before heading off straight toward his dad's stall, where the old goat was bent over doing something behind the small stall. Hey, Pa! He yells as he jogs off, leaving me somewhat embarrassed by his loudness as I trail behind him slowly. His dad groans and leans up, facing in our direction but pausing as his eyes land on me. Hey, boys. Uh, uh, happy birthday, Wesley. Wow, I can't believe he remembered, too. No, Aaron must have mentioned it to him at some point. 
Wes wanted, to, Wes wanted to ask something, and then I was going to help him and Mr. Ayrton with a few things down at their place. Oh, well, ask away, then. Uh, Dad wanted to, uh, know if tomorrow was good for his and your trip down to Port Haven. No, oh, uh, definitely. Any time that's good with him is good with me, he says, a smile replacing his somewhat intense stare now. I was bummed that we had to wait on account of a late harvest. Did he have a preference on time, or...? Uh, I don't think so. He just wanted me to ask what day was good for you. Well, tomorrow was great. I'll let him know. Me and Dad will be down at the community center later tonight anyways, so I'm sure you can iron out the details with him there if you want. I offer as the goat continues hurriedly getting his things together, pulling out a bulging bag from behind the stall before responding. No, sure. Sure thing. I'll see you all there if I have the time. Now, if that's everything, I'm a little behind on my day, so I need to get to work. He says, hoisting the bag over his shoulder and shooting a glare at Arrow, who just rolls his eyes. Yeah, that's everything, Mr. Jones. And with that, the goat pushes through us and makes his way back towards the town center, most likely heading to the docks. So, what's with... I pause as I turn to see Arrow deeper in thought than I expected. Uh, Arrow? What? He asks, not fully listening to what I'm saying. What's wrong? Hmm. N nothing. Uh, just, just, just that's the first time I've seen him smile in weeks. Did something happen between you two, or... Nah, don't worry about it. He seems to suddenly have some sort of revelation, a massive grin forming on his face as he begins jogging off towards the town center. Come on, we've got some apples to see! The goat yells as he sprints off, once again beckoning me to follow. Before I do, though, I take a quick glance at the sky and take note of the sun. Probably a good hour till sundown, not too bad. I start to head off towards where Arrow went, retracing my steps casually back to the entrance of town. And there I find an impatient goat waiting for me. Oh my gods, could you be any slower? He groans exaggeratedly as I walk past him. Hey, don't sweat it, we got plenty of time. She won't be done anyways, there's no need to rush. He groans again and I laugh as he joins my side, begrudgingly matching my leisurely pace as we head off toward the orchard. After a few short minutes of walking, we reach our destination with ease, just as the sun begins to paint the world with its tired red hues. And to our surprise, we see two big bushels of apples out in front of the orchard house. Ha! Huh, told you she'd be done! He says, almost like he won some sort of bet, but I quickly correct him. She said she had a couple of orders for some other people. I bet those are for them. His head hangs in defeat as I glance around for Ash, who seems to be nowhere in sight. Suddenly, I feel a whoosh of air as the goat behind me rushes off briskly towards the house. I turn just in time to see him rip something off of the door and watch as he begins looking it over. I approach and Arrow clears his throat before beginning to read the paper out loud in what I can only assume to be his best impression of Ash. Or worst impression. It, it's honestly hard to tell if this is the best he can do or not. Hey, I'm taking a nap. Uh, the two bushels to your left are for my paying customers. There's an empty one out to the left of the house. As he reads, I cock my head to read the back, which simply says, To Wesley. Now pick whatever apples you want. Ash. Huh, damn, she got tired fast. What did she mean by paying customers? Oh, just her dad owes my dad a favor for something, and my dad is cashing in for a bushel of apples. Gotcha. He says as he hands me the letter, which I fold up in pocket as he steps around the house. A few seconds later, he returns with the empty bushel, lugging it easily with one hand before setting it on the ground and looking up at me. Shall we? He offers with an ostentatious bow and a wink. <laughs> but of course! I say, trying my best to emulate the uh, an opulent capital boy, as we both grab a handle and make our way down the road through the orchard back towards my house. Well, that's a good picture. So, what kind of what kind of apples are we in the market for this evening? Uh, the good ones. I say while raising my paw up to some of the branches I can reach, ripping an apple and twisting it off before tossing it into the empty apple vessel. As we walk, Arrow does the same, though he seems to be more picky than in this harvesting than I am. Oh, come on! You gotta get the best ones! What are you, some sort of apple fanatic? Um, apple connoisseur? I'll thank you for getting the terminology correct next time. Wow, please forgive me, Mr. Connoisseur. It was not my intention to disrespect you. Hmm. He pretends to ponder on something before continuing. Maybe we can make an apple connoisseur out of you yet, my apprentice. We both laugh at that for a while and take turns passing back and forth fake apple-based trivia as we walk. And before we know it, we're done and almost back home. Time flies when you're having fun, right? Once we arrived, we debated on where we'd leave the apple bushel. But eventually, I decided that the best place was probably inside the kitchen. So after lightening our load, we decided to take the quick rest. 
Okay, pop quiz. What's the best type of apple? One plucked from the garden of the king of apples, of course. Correct. I try not to laugh at this stupid non-joke, but quickly break and arrow follows suit. Our laughter fills the small room, and suddenly the scraping of wood on wood sounds out from the other room. Both of our heads whip towards the closed door by the, by the bookcase, which opens within seconds of our glancing, revealing Dad in all of his tired glory. He yawns and flashes his trademark goofy grin. Hey, boys. He takes a few steps forward and glances off into the kitchen, pausing to stretch his back as he does so. Well, that was awfully fast. Yeah, me and Arrow got to pick the apples ourselves, too. My tone sounds almost childlike, and I feel myself getting embarrassed by... Embarrassed by how dumb I must sound. I continue, but I try to tone down the gleefulness. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. Ah, oh, I'm loving this so far. Ah, oh, new characters! Oh, I can't wait to get to know them. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. This is a new episode of Fail. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!